Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tech Economist. Tesla plan on ramping up supply. There's no sign of a $30,000 car yet. And even if one was revealed tomorrow, at best, we wouldn't see it in production for another couple of years. Spoiler alert, there isn't a factory for it yet, or even one in production, or even a location for it mentioned, let alone a corresponding factory for the insane level of demand that it would require about twice the total global sales that are even available today. But we want Tesla to ramp up production an exponential 50% a year, and they're making premium priced cars. Oh, and only offering two models, or potentially a third with the Cybertruck, which will be even more expensive than the other two. What is wrong with this company? Are they totally clueless? Do they not understand how supply and demand works? If you increase your supply by this much, then it only works if you have the demand to match, or else no one can afford to buy your cars, unless you reduce the price significantly, and then you lose your amazing margins, and profits are about the same as they were when you sold half as many cars in the first place. Why is this so hard for Tesla to understand? Hence, why they need to launch a compact vehicle to hit that price point, where the real demand is, not some luxury premium price point for the upper middle class. Or perhaps they do, and some analysts realize this too, Tesla are going to have to actually reduce their supply and produce fewer vehicles next year than their current run rate, and possibly deliver under 2 million next year, not even quite making it to 50% growth for 2023, especially in a recession. This is the reality of the situation. All this additional growth from Texas and Berlin will be curtailed by the economy, especially from these factories, as no one can afford a long range Model Y. They're simply too expensive. It's time for us to face the facts. The dream is over. People don't buy these cars in a recession. Tesla have no choice other than to lower prices and cut margins or cut supply or a combination of both. However, the factories that are ramping, well, they look kind of cool. In fact, so neat and tidy where an incredible amount is done just under the one roof, like an astonishing amount from cathodes to cells to batteries to gigacastings, all at the one site. Raw materials in, finished product out. Therefore, wouldn't one might possibly think that like for like, Tesla are able to get these finished products out of the factory at a significantly lower cost than say a factory based in California with high labor costs and regulation. One that was built, I believe in 1962 by GM, even before it was part of Numi for Toyota, which was who Tesla purchased the facility from in 2010. Tesla had to retrofit the Fremont site for the Model S and the Model 3 line was initially going in 2017, which in Tesla years feels like a really long time ago. They had to learn how to perform this special thing called volume production on that site with that line. Although this also did include constructing some massive tents to facilitate the process. It was a huge expensive learning curve for the company. And Elon says Tesla nearly went broke doing it and called it production hell. But what they learned they were able to replicate in China. Along with all the amazing manufacturing knowledge and experience there is available in China. With that, Tesla were then able to build a custom Model 3 factory in China that worked much better than Fremont, and the vehicles were able to be built at a much lower cost. In the meantime, Tesla discovered how much easier life could be with gigacastings, and eventually managed to incorporate those in their next factory in Shanghai for the Model Y, which was also being used in Fremont for the Model Y there too. This Shanghai Model Y factory now has about twice the output of the Shanghai Model 3 factory, despite actually being about 25% smaller and making a larger vehicle. Yes, the cost of manufacturing in China is much less than California, but these processes were also far more efficient and lower cost too. But not just the contrast between the Model 3 in Shanghai and the Model 3 factory in Fremont, but also between the Model 3 in Shanghai and the Model Y factory in Shanghai with rear castings. Think about how much Tesla have thought about the manufacturing process since Shanghai, along with the obvious addition of a front casting, but also the structural battery pack. Then imagine that in the world's largest factory in a state much easier to do business than California, then the same factory also making a revolutionary new lower cost cell that is probably about half the cost per mile of range it generates for a vehicle. Do you get it? I hope so, you are Tesla economist viewers. The vehicles and factories that Tesla are ramping up to get this additional supply to customers 
are vehicles that cost so much less to produce than the previous. Imagine the cost of a Texas Model Y relative to a Fremont Model Y. Tesla were likely getting around 30% margin when they were selling a Model Y long range for just around $50,000, implying they must have cost about $35,000 to make. This was without any inflation, maybe slightly more, perhaps 37,000 or so. Now the cost of the 4680 cells alone will save around $6,000 per Model Y, at least once ramped up. Then we might assume the structural battery pack and front castings are also going to have some impact on cost too. Then the fact we might expect it to be producing around four or five times faster than Fremont, as in perhaps five times as many vehicles per squared foot from Texas compared to Fremont. And this is probably conservative, as Shanghai is already about three times as fast. Yes, I'm of the theory that Texas will make Model Ys a lot faster than Shanghai, despite how amazing China is at manufacturing, it comes down to the systems and processes. And as it is also automated, it's the robots that are the bottleneck in production, not the rate at which the employees can work. Think how much effort Tesla put into automation and the production line can only be as fast as the slowest robot. Well, that increased production speed also reduces cost again. With all of this, at least when ramped to about a million a year or so, but even half that is still a big deal, then call me crazy, but is it not too far-fetched to assume that Tesla can make a Texas Model Y for around twenty-five to perhaps $30,000, possibly $28,000 if I had to choose a number? If you find that hard to believe and think I am way off, then don't just tell me in the comments, but show your numbers as to why. But for further validation, we have the Model Y for sale at 300,000 yuan or $43,000 in China. Even at 25% margin, that's a $32,000 cost. Then the lower cost sales and processes, it could be below $30,000. Yes, I expect Tesla to make Texas Model Y for lower cost than the standard range Model Y in China, even though it has an additional motor. And I am talking about Texas, there is Berlin too. Energy costs more there and perhaps other regulation too. Although energy costs can be negated by solar and battery and labor costs less in Germany than it does in Texas. Also, Tesla's cost more in Germany anyway they have a larger cost saving to the consumer as gas costs more, as long as energy prices don't get too crazy over there. Either way though, there will be very low cost and no tariffs to pay selling in Europe. So back to this whole increase in supply that Tesla can no longer justify due to there not being enough demand for premium crossovers of around $70,000. Well, the Model Y Texas was only $60,000. It's also a superior car. It will just drive and handle better and is capable of a similar performance and likely able to charge faster too, i.e. a better vehicle offering more value, but somewhat moot if not enough people can afford them in the first place. And as Tesla are planning on big numbers, we do need a lot of people to be able to afford them. But even at $60,000, there would be 50% margin, even if we decided they're making them for $30,000, except Tesla also get $3,000 back on the battery subsidies which actually takes them to 55% margin. So what we are saying is Tesla could still generate 40% margin if they charged just $45,000 for the Texas Model Y. Wow, doesn't $45,000 sound low cost for that car? And doesn't 40% sound like an insane margin? Of course, that's a standard option version. A lot of people upgrade paint, wheels and trim, which all adds to profit too. Oh, and that software upgrade that costs $15,000 that makes the car drive itself, that adds a bit of profit too. Of course, you know as well as me that there's a further $7,500 off for the tax credit too, which would then take the car down to $37,500. And Tesla would still have a gross profit of over $20,000 per vehicle sold, including the optional extras. So in reality, they're likely still able to sell these Texas Model Ys for $60,000 and the consumer only pays $52,500. And Tesla profit over $30,000 per vehicle sold, including the subsidies and optional extras. Pretty crazy to think. But either way, there's a huge buffer there still. And if Tesla did have to meet demand more as supply is so much higher, then they can reduce prices. Of course, not all the ramping is Model Y. We have the Cybertruck too which could have even higher margins again. Okay, Germany doesn't have quite as good incentives, but a Tesla is more valuable there due to the higher gas prices. And we have this massive margin buffer anyway. 
some back of the napkin math though. If they hit 1 million run rate for the Y lines, that's probably $30 billion gross profit per factory. Then maybe $20 billion again for the Cybertruck. That's an additional $80 billion in gross profit to come. And if demand is really bad, then perhaps drop the prices and it ends up being $60 billion. Of course, there is OPEX and tax on top of that, although OPEX is almost negligible at this stage. But for comparison's sake, the current trailing 12 months in earnings is $11 billion. I guess your conviction should come down to how much you believe Tesla is capable of ramping up all these factories. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.